One of the most common questions I get asked as I'm talking with Year 12s is what order should I put my preferences in? How does that all work? So I want to take you through um, some advice about how the system sort of works in your favour so that you can make the most of it and actually get the most bang for your buck from your preferences. So on your TISC application you have up to six preferences that you can list. Now you don't have to use all six places if you don't want to, it's completely up to you. In fact, how you do your preferences is entirely your business, you can do whatever you like with them. But these are just some tips that I would put out there knowing how the system works so that you can get the most out of it. So you don't have to use all six preferences, they might all be at one university or they might be spread across all four TISC universities. That's completely up to you as well. If I was putting in an application, I would follow these basic sort of principles. I'd have a really serious think about what's the course that I'd actually love to do most of all at university. And I'd put that down as my first preference. In fact, if you've got a couple, you can actually afford to put down a couple of these dream courses if you want to. What I wouldn't do, and what I'd advise you not to, is please don't sell yourself short in this. Even if you think it's sort of an absolute outside chance that you've got any hope of getting into these courses, you're not going to be disadvantaged by putting them down and going for it a bit. So back yourself you're not going to be disadvantaged. Even if you don't get into those courses, you'll still be considered for other stuff as well. In the middle of your list somewhere, I'd suggest that you put down some pretty safe choices. Now, how do you work out what's a safe choice? Well, the easiest way is to look at your TISC guide or on the TISC website and look at where the universities have provided guaranteed entry ATARs for most of their courses. In fact, the vast majority of courses will have a guaranteed entry ATAR listed. And particularly at the end of the year, once you actually get your Year 12 results and you know what your actual ATAR is, have a look at the TISC guide again, have a look at those guaranteed entry ATARs. Because if your ATAR ends up being equal to or better than that guaranteed entry ATAR, you know you can get into that course. It's also a good idea sometimes to have a think about a plan B. Now this is particularly so if you are uh, aiming for one of those courses that's really hard to get into, they have very few places available and are really competitive to get into. It's really important to have a plan B, uh, perhaps another course at the university or at a different university that is a bit easier to get into that you can use as a stepping stone to where you want to get later on. Okay, the universities can give you really good advice about all of this stuff. But if you have a bit of a plan B in place, then whether things turn out better than you hope at the end of the year or not as good, you've still got all those bases covered.